Hello, in this video I'm going to go over how to use the procedural mesh generation tools which are found in the Unreal Engine Lyra project and how you can transfer these tools to your own game. The first thing you want to do is open up the Epix Games Launcher and head over to the Samples tab and you just want to click on the Lyra Starter Game and make sure that you've downloaded and installed this project. So once you've downloaded the Lyra project, just open it up and I've created a new blank map and we're now going to play around with some of the procedural mesh generation tools. So to get started with that, we just want to open up the content drawer and then we're going to head over to the tools folder. And as we can see, there are a bunch of procedural meshes that we're going to play around with. So the first one we're going to play around with is going to be the stairs. So we just want to drag this into our level. And we can see if we just drag this handle, we can adjust the width, the length, and the height of the stairs. And in the details panels, each procedural mesh has some settings that you can kind of play around with. So with these stairs, we can basically customize how many steps that it has. So if I just go to the type and change this to be fixed step number, I can change this to be two. And now my um, staircase is basically going to only have two um, steps. If I can change this to be something like 40, and that's going to have loads more steps. So you can basically play around with some of the settings inside of there. We can also make these stairs basically hanging. So we don't want the stairs to be like touching the ground. We can just check this floating box. And now the stairs will be um, floating in the air. We can change the material if we wanted to do that. I'm just going to leave it. And we can change the bevel. So if I just zoom into the stairs, we can see that um, the surfaces are quite flat and sharp. If we just check this bevel, it will kind of make them smooth. And we can play around with saying if we want to. So once you've finished playing around with your procedural um, mesh, what you want to do is basically give it some collision. So we can just go to search and look for simple. And just turn on simplified collision. This will just give the stairs some collision and then we can right click on it and go scripted, actor actions and swap to a static mesh. And now this procedural mesh will become a static mesh which we can have inside of our game. So I'm just going to go play and my player character can kind of walk up these stairs. So now let's play around with some of the other procedural tools. So I'm going to open up my content drawer and this time we're going to play around with the corner piece. So again, we can just use this handle to kind of adjust its width, its height, and the length of this piece. And we can change the radius of it. So if I just increase this, the radius becomes bigger. And we can also change the extrude ceiling. So I think this kind of controls kind of like the distance between kind of these two points. So the smaller I make it, the smaller the distance between these two points is. So I think this tool would be kind of helpful for kind of like creating an arch. And there's some other settings inside of it. So I can just turn off this mirror and we only get half of it. And we can also make this have a mirror offset. So if I increase this, we can see that the mirror offset is kind of greater. And again, I think with every um, procedural um, mesh tool inside of this project, we can bevel it. So I can just make it smooth if I wanted to. So once you're finished with this tool, we can just um, scroll down and go to generate a new static mesh. This will make it a static mesh. And then we can just right click on it and go to scripted, actor actions, and then swap this to a static mesh. Quick pause, if you're enjoying this tutorial so far, and you've not, please subscribe and like. A lot of my viewers are not actually subscribed to my channel. It helps me out, and you'll be notified about helpful videos like this in the future. All right, let's continue with the video. And then I'll show you one more final procedural tool, which I think is the coolest out of all of them inside of this project. So we just open up the content drawer, and we go to the advanced window, and here, like it says, we can kind of like create an advanced window. So we can change kind of like the opening of where this window is. So I can make it here, here, or basically anywhere inside of the shape. This has the most settings, I think. So if I just scroll up, we can see, and scroll down, we can see it has loads of settings. So let's go through some of them. So we can kind of like change the corner of this wall. So if I just make this be like round, and using this wall corner radius, we can kind of change like how round it's going to be. We can change its width, so how long it is its thickness, how thick the wall is going to be, and its height. Again, we can change the material if we wanted to do that, but I'm just going to leave it. We can kind of customize how we want the opening in this kind of um, window to be. So if we just go to the opening settings, I can kind of make this um, round if I wanted it to be. And we can play around with these settings to make it rounder. I can adjust the width and the opening height of my window. If I play around with the corner radius, we can kind of see it kind of makes it a bit smoother and more like in like a circle shape. And then we can do some more things with this window. We can make it have a border. So you can see it's kind of got this little border and we can change its thickness and 
how like wide it's going to be. I'm just going to change this to be a different color so it's a bit clearer to see. I want to make it a bit smaller. So now we kind of have like a circular um, window if we wanted that. And finally, to kind of like make this an actual window, we can scroll down and then click this has glass. And this will basically make a glass for our window. And I'm just going to change this material to be like a glass material. I think this product has one. And now we kind of have like a window and we can kind of customize where this window is going to be inside of our wall. So I think this is like the coolest of all the procedural tools inside of this project. And once we're happy with it, we can just scroll down and go generate new static mesh. And then we'll right click on it and go scripted, act actions and swap this to a static mesh. And now we have some cool procedural tools for our level. There are some more procedural tools, but I'm not going to go through all of them. But I think these procedural tools will be really helpful for like prototyping and building levels. So it's really cool that we got this inside of the Lara project. I'm now going to go over how we basically transfer these procedural tools into our own custom project if you'd like to do that. The first thing you're going to do is go to the project where you want to transfer these procedural tools to and you want to make sure that it has this plug in it. So you want to go to edit and go to plugins and then you want to look for the geometry, I think it's called the geometry script plugin. So you just want to make sure that this plugin is enabled. So just check it and click yes and then you have to restart your editor. Then once you've enabled that plugin, head back to the Lyra project, open up the content drawer, and you just want to right click on the tools folder and go migrate, select OK, and then it's going to ask you to basically select where you want to transfer this to. You want to find the project that you want to transfer it to and select its content folder and just click select folder. It's going to display this warning message. You want to click no. And then you just want to click yes all, and then it should transfer the procedural tools to your project. So I'm just going to close this and I'm in my um, project which I wanted to transfer the tools to. I can open up the content drawer and if I go to tools we can see that we have the procedural tools. Let me just bring in a block. Okay so I don't think it transferred the materials but that's fine. And we can basically have the procedural tools inside of this project now. So that's all for this tutorial. If you enjoyed like and subscribe and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!